I was just gonna say one thing I really like about Sift is that um, we are able to just pull like uh, a full list and I don't have to necessarily take out LLC or anything like that. Um, it gives me the ability to always just go back and like look at any old data that I pulled. And if I ever want to do hit the LLCs or a trust or something, it's right there, which I never really took advantage of. What's up, man? Um, so we were, I was deep prospecting old LLCs um, that own land here in, in, in the Mecklenburg, in the Charlotte area. And we actually found one owner. It was his last parcel that he owned in his LLC that he was looking to close. Um, and we ended up getting it under contract that same day and then assigned that same day. Um, and it should oh, be yeah. closing next week. So um, that seems to be like a huge, uh, a huge focus for us now. A lot of the, a lot of older people with um, land, they own it in LLCs, but it might be like their last parcel or the last thing they have. So we started mm -hmm. deprospecting them to see if they had any interest in selling them. And it seems to be working out really good. And trust and LLCs are a really, really, really good niche to focus on. A lot of that's that's why I always tell users like you know if you can just clean up you know twenty five records and you know uh, a week or something like that and just focus on those. So really, it's almost like its own little first to market strategy. You know, clean into incom uh, incomplete into clean or something like that because there's just like no, no most people most people don't even include that data in their export they just say do not include companies and trusts right because there's there's one of the largest education you know wholesaling education platforms out there teach you not to do that and the reason why is because that education platform sends direct mail and your direct mail chance of hitting when you're sending to an llc or a trust to a household address is really really low um it's a lot of return mail from that. And so uh, it obviously, if no one else is pulling the data, it's a really good little niche to focus on. Um, yeah, I love it. That's fantastic. What What do you think time was? Well, first of all, let me step back a second on that one. How, how did that one surface to the top? How did you realize that, that was a deal or a, a prospect that wasn't being reached again? Was it through you guys were doing niche sequential or was it just a random one you selected? Uh, it was actually under incomplete data. I've just been letting it like soak there and never really focused on it. Um, yeah. But since we started targeting land, that seemed to be like one of the last buckets that we hadn't touched. Um, it was actually like one of the third leads that, that I spoke to. Uh, okay. So you filtered by incomplete data land and then just started basically working through those records in it, like through niche sequential marketing. And then you ended up reaching somebody. Yes. And, and at a state owner. And I would say, okay, cool. So you, nice. And then basically you got a hold of them and, and bing, bing, boom. That's dope. I love it. Well, so how much time do you think it took it uh, up to that point from the starting the call to getting the, your first correct number to somebody? Um, to getting, actually he answered right away. Um, it did take a couple of going back and forth to actually get the deal done. Um, so I want to say total time spent on it was probably three weeks. Um, uh, the the sad well the funny thing about it is that the total time that it was sitting in my CRM was probably like a good seven months. Yeah, that activity log really kicks you in the, the gonad sometimes <laughs> when when something actually pulls you know fruitful from from a deal and you realize like damn it's been sitting here for so long and you're just kind of thankful that no one else ended up calling and getting a hold of that person especially those ones that convert like that you know. Yeah. Um, and that's a, and that's another, I guess the, the cherry on top was it didn't, he did have a couple offers, nothing that really uh, intrigued them, but it wasn't like he was getting calls every single day, like most yeah. other um, niches that I go after. What I like to focus on a, a nice little niche for everyone to think about is full probate data. Right. But then filter by probates that are in trusts, because that basically null voids that probate process, obviously, and allows you to have, uh, you know, uh, if they want to sell, then they can sell. You know what I mean? Um, as long as the trust dictates it. and you can read what the trust says online. And so it's kind of a super easy uh, a niche to convert compared to other probates are like, you know, a little bit harder um, sometimes to, to convert over.
um, or rather to get to close because maybe there's like four different siblings and the mess and all this other stuff and the trust alleviates all that family drama. I'm gonna give you some free money. I'm gonna remove all excuses that you have on why you can't get started in REI SIF by actually giving you money to start at here at REI SIF. Using this coupon code, you'll get $25 to use for skip tracing, direct mail, and whatever else you want. And I'm gonna go even further and let you know that when you sign up, if you go ahead and message support, you might even be able to get yourself a little bit of data in there as well. But just know that it's way more data than you would need in order to get your first deal, your second deal, or even just get a few more deals inside your business, especially when it's free. Use this coupon code, go sign up for a trial, and continue watching our content and learn more about how to be awesome at sales and marketing in real estate.